Okay, so here's the first working model. Um, we've got a USB, the key, USB keyboard connected to the computer, acting as a keyboard, and then we've mapped off the various keys onto various relays, and they are in series with these contacts that go through the water. Uh, anode down here, cathodes hanging above. So, as you can see, when they hit, it presses a key, and the, key, the computer plays a note. So I've got it set very, very sensitive right now, so I'm not going to be able to do any big waves that go around because they're so close, everything will set them off if I start making big waves in the pool. Um, I'll have to raise them later when I want to start playing with more complicated patterns, but as you can see, of course, I can come from one side. Uh, this doesn't make a big enough wave, maybe. You can come from one side and then have it come around to the other. Bum, bum, bum. It's hitting this twice. It seems to be kind of rippling back and forth off the wall. Maybe the contacts be closer to the wall or further away. If it's right on the wall, it should only hit it once. If it's next to the wall, it'll hit it twice, it seems. It's got a bit of an echo to it. This one's further away from the wall, so maybe it's just not quite getting hit. As you can see, the it, it moves away from the wall there. Um, you, every point on the, over the water is going to be a valid point. Uh, and you got 3D, too. It's every X, Y, and Z. The height of the wave sensitivity is in there, too. So this is just stage one. Stage two is going to be start to build some walls in here to be able to control or map where the waves will propagate and be basically design 2D beats and maybe even 3D beats. If we use a bottle like this, maybe we can uh, use the two of them and have a, the neck come down up like a, a reverse bridge and basically bring the wave under the water and then bring it back up over the water so that we can have multi-layered waves basically. Um, and then you can see I can start a wave that way, and then a wave that way, and I'm going to get some different types of uh, beats out of it. And if I were to go the other way, you'll get a different type of beating pattern out of it. Now, one of the things you'll notice first is one of them beats more often than another. That's because one of them is closer to the water. So it's all in positioning the contacts, really. And then it's... it's so there's, there's so many variables to play with here, it's just crazy. Not only can every combination of contacts be used over the water but every possible combination of making waves can be used as well so um, I have to play with it a bit and try to narrow down my field of playing I think first step is uh, build some walls that's gonna be fun okay it's getting late and I got distracted with some other stuff so this is the best I got I didn't manage to get some walls yet today I really want to do some nice walls and curves and stuff but for now we'll just do have a pillar it's a pop bottle filled with coins and I've just placed it right there, as you can see. Waves can still make it around here. When they come in, they'll create this kind of little vortex, be eaten, and then they'll follow out along the edge again, as you can see. They, they, they like to follow the rim after they come out of this um, pillar against the wall d configuration. Um, and uh, what I've noticed is I've got one contact out here close to the wall and far away, and one contact hugged up against this wall. It creates almost a diode-like effect. If I send a wave in this way, as you can see, it hit the piano and it hit the uh, trumpet. Whereas if I send a wave in this way... Uh, sorry, the wave managed to get to the piano from this direction. Let's try that again. There, you can see it's not going to end up getting around to the other one. I can send it in pretty strong and it's not going to end up getting around to the piano. It's blocked off. Um, the other thing is echoes. So uh, it's got a nice wall right here close, so it's going to create a lot of double taps. Um, the fir if a first wave has enough amplitude, it'll create a double tap. And then it's also going to have an echo off of this wall here if it's strong enough. Uh, the nice thing I've done is, I've noticed, is that because this weakens the wave, it spreads it outwards, whereas this, a wave coming from this direction, will actually be focused by this into this point, more or less. It has to do with the positioning. Um, it's, uh, these, two, these three waves will come in at more or less a similar amplitude. So if I go like that, I get bum, 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 bum. Hit, echo, echo, echo of echo. And then if you decrease the amplitude a little bit, you can get bum, bum, bum. No, that was even lower. That's bum, bum. The echo wasn't strong enough to do it. There we go. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so as you can see, you can kind of design these. And of course, if you put it further away and in a different position, you're going to get a completely different kind of echoing effect. Let's try putting it uh, really, really close, actually. That's probably too close. There we go. Dun 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 dun. Move it way out here and bum bum bum. It's more or less the same amplitude coming off of both of these. Um, and then, as you can see, you can you can really just play with it. Full 2D and actually 3D. You can you can make waves under the water and then try to affect the surface of the water. 
Um, now, I could try just, like, what I really want to find is some simple motions that can be repeated and some designs that will create a resonance that's beautiful. So if I were to find a way to sit here, spinning this, and have a configuration of walls that would produce a nice beat, that's, that's kind of the end goal right now. But uh, right now, if I just hammer away on the bowl, I just end up with noise. I've just got two contacts, and I'm, I know about as, about as much as designing these uh, musical wave patterns as you do. I've just finished this first prototype. So um, there's a lot to do. Um, the other thing that looked that I had, other idea I had that was really fun, but I never got around to actually implementing, was this guy. Um, he kind of works, but uh, anyways, the goal was to put the music maker on a floater. That way, you can move the floaters around as you're beating it. So you could be sitting here beating your your music away, and then you can adjust them and move them around very easily. Or you could even make their their motion kind of part of the music. But um, uh, I found I, what I was using was a little motor and I was just rotating a cap. It makes ugly noise and it vibrates like crazy and once it's vibrating um, often it will, that vibration will make its own connection outside of the waves plus the waves it adds back into the pool just make it really hard to control. Um, if I can become a master at manipulating the waves in the first level system here maybe later you throw in these guys that will also be adding their own waves back into the system and you can complicate it up a little. But ideally, maybe they're just little bobbers, and they are completely digital, and they just have oscillators in them, and they just produce a digital sound. Even you wouldn't even need to connect it to the computer. This the, the little floaty device could uh, emit the sound itself. So, anyways, I've got lots of fun fun ideas and directions to go with this thing. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. Um, all you need to do is hack out the keyboard. That's the uh, the annoyingly painstaking waste of time and detail work part. But once you got the keyboard mapped out, and you can use keys to use use contacts to press keys all you need is the relays and you're good to go um, yeah so that's about it it could be a really fun project I think just a couple points to add on here um, one Hollywood misportrays electricity a lot as you can see I'm not feeling a thing here I got 12 volts one amp running through here and it's not gonna do a thing to me and that's because I'm not closing the circuit um, if you take two wires stick them in here you're not gonna electrocute the guy over there if you took one wire here, one wire over there, and put the guy in the middle, maybe you could electrocute him if uh, he was more conductive than the water. I'm using heavily salted water, so it's going to be way more conductive than my body. But perhaps you could find a way to get it to go through the person. Uh, second of all, uh, I'm using a hacked open USB keyboard. This is just so that it's an easy DIY project that anybody could build. Uh, of course, using Arduinos or any of those little bored Linux computers is uh, maybe a better option. Um, but uh, I, I want to keep it this way for now. Uh, but yeah, you could of course do it with a, any any kind of system where you can just wire in contacts, uh, Arduinos or whatever you got on hand. Uh, you could even use mice or joysticks or whatever kind of input device you have. 